All right. <clears throat> so um, we're gonna pick up again. We're talking about this. so. Uh, <clears throat> First, we're talking about assembly. We want to talk about joint type. So, how is the material coming together? That kind of has a lot to do with what kind of uh, bonding method you can use. So, we have butt joints where the ends of the pieces are, are what's touching, lap joints, T's, corners, and then edge. So, either down here or up there, the two surfaces are going the same way. So with that, we have those. Also, if we're using wood, do we have different joint types or different joint configurations? Yeah. Yeah. yeah like yeah. what? Yeah. yeah, so we've got something. So kind of the dowel is kind of a mechanical joint, that's kind of a mechanical joint, but you can have the just the end bud, you can do a dados, and now you've got a cut down into it. You can do miters, where now you're kind of, you're, instead of doing a, a butt joint end to end, you're kind of joining it at a 45. Why do you, why do, you do minor joints? It looks better, but what did you say? Stronger. It's stronger, why is it stronger? I think it would be weaker. There's more surface area. Yeah, it's kind of, kind of, because it's, it's the, the way the forces are in it, but also there's more surface area there. Because that distance is a lot less than that distance. Look at it. If you look at a triangle, that's the longest side, right? So when you miter it, you're making both of them that distance. So you're, you're, you're multiplying the distance. Um, but also now it's not, the forces kind of work better. And it, and it looks a lot better too. Do, and do we only do miters in wood? No. Mm -mm. No, you do it in metal and stuff all the time, right? Yeah. For the same reasons. <clears throat> so, what are some benefits of adhesives? Versus like swelling, or just yes, in general. There's no heat or so, yeah. So it depends on it. It can have heat or not. Sometimes it can well. Yeah, you don't need holes. What else? Cheaper sometimes. Yeah, it can be cheaper. No fillers. Wasn't well, it the filler itself? Yeah. What else? Sometimes bonding different uh, materials like uh, metal to fiberglass. Yeah, you can bond any material to any material. So different materials. Ooh. What else? You got to wait for distortion or warping. Yeah. No distortion. What else? Probably easier to undo if you have to uh, take something back apart or replace something. Is it? Always easier to, to nope. undo. If you're taking the door skin off of a door frame, yeah, like on a vehicle. <laughs> like sometimes they got to replace the outer door skin if it was welded. You'd have to. So sometimes it's easier to undo. What else? So can be easier. Can be easier. Run out of ink. <laughs> <laughs> It could also serve as a 
as a weather stripping or as a okay, so weather type. Okay, so it can be a gasket. Yeah. But I want to come back to this one. So it can be easier to remove sometimes, but what else? What kind of goes along with that when you're applying it? Does that have to be what spread over the whole surface? Can it be like spot, spot glue? And, but more so when you're aligning the parts. You can still move it for a minute. Yeah, you have some working time, right? So you can put them together and then line them up while the, while the adhesive's coming together. So you have some work time. And then, what else? What are you saying, Robert? Oh, uh, no, I just forgot. <laughs> Anything else? Adhesives. Um... What's another big benefit that's not up here? Takes less steps to bond something. You don't have to drill holes in the line. Yeah, it's pretty easy. Easier. Easier. Yeah. <laughs> it's not easy sometimes. Easier to remove. Easier. <laughs> I know that's not spelled right. I didn't want to erase it. <laughs> what else? Yeah. So what, what kind of goes along with being easy? Does it deteriorate? No. Oh, quick. Quick. It's fast. So it can't be fast? Sometimes. Um, what are some disadvantages of it? It can deteriorate. It can break down. It might not be as strong as some alternatives like welding. Yeah, right. Can it have high strength? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it can have real high strength. Strong as nails. I use that stuff all the time. <laughs> <laughs> not not liquid nails, but the, yeah. another another brand. It could have a bad chemical reaction with something else that's being used with it. Um, what is it Curing time. Yeah. So then that same thing that here, the work time. It could also go. It could go both ways. You're trying to put something in that's not flat. Put it on the side or above, then you have to figure out a way to hold it while it's curing. What else? Uh, I think you said sometimes are, uh, they're weather sensitive, like a certain amount of heat or some amount of cold could mess them up. Yeah, so that kind of goes into the breakdown, right? So, in, in breakdown, so. With the sensitivity, there's weather. Environment. Yeah, environment. So, anything else? Shelf life. Yeah, shelf life. So where are adhesives used? And what are some common uses of adhesives? Wood. Wood glue. Yeah, so wood glue. I, I had a furniture. Uh, automotive. I had a whole selection of wood glue here for all different purposes. Uh, what's that? Uh, so what do you say? About? Uh, it's a furniture. Furniture. So where would you use adhesives in furniture? Wood and furniture in so, general should have an adhesive. Yeah, so gluing the wood together. What else? Upholstery. 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 Auto you body. Use, you use two part or a, a glue that kind of tacks and then you can put it on and it'll cure. And, and that's how you cover uh, material with fabric. Auto body. Yeah. Baby weld. Baby weld, that's what yeah. I was So, in auto body, what are you talking about? Auto body, uh, a lot of weather strippings glue it on, side moldings. Yeah, so moldings, uh, um, I don't know if decorative if things. Fillers are considered adhesives, but a lot of times, I mean, they are very... It is, like Bondo? Yeah. Is, would that count as an adhesive? It's a filler. 
It's a filler, but you can join two pieces together. So. The penny. No, but does it work the same way nope. some adhesives do? No. Oh, yeah. So, what's epoxy? Epoxy is a... Uh, no, epoxy is a... Uh, is, is epoxy an adhesive? Yeah. Yes, yeah, right? What, what makes up, what makes something an epoxy? Two pieces. It starts like with a hard. Yeah, it's a two part. You mix together and it hardens, right? Yeah. Does Bondo yes. like that? Yes, yeah. it is. So technically, is it an adhesive? Yes. Well, I've never used Bondo to adhere anything. No, but does Bondo stick itself to something else? Yeah. So, yeah. <clears throat> Do we use ret or epoxies in other processes with other things? In other things, like, yeah. So what about fiberglass? Fiberglass, yeah. That's two piece. Hard Are we hard. using epoxy there? Oh, uh, yes. it mixes it mixes it up. The resin. What what does the resin do in fiberglass? It hardens. It hardens. And does it? Adhes is it an adhesive in that in that sense? Yeah, because you adhes the mat to whatever. Yeah, you you, cover it the, you, you stick the different layers of the mat together and hold the mat in its position, right? So. Else? Any other downsides to adhesives? Messy. You have to know yeah, they how can to be use messy, them. right? Messy, yeah. Yeah. You have to know how to use them. Yeah, you have to know the how to use them. come in a tube or something, you got to get rid of the mess, though. Yeah. How and. Not like nails. Uh, where to use them? Yeah. They're irreversible. Yeah, sometimes you can't get them undone. Yeah. Sometimes you have to make sure you get it right. We did that at um, when I was doing RV stuff. We were we were screwing down the new tops we put on, and it was, screw holes made room for for water to get in. Plus, we had to have the seal, and so we went from having to do butyl tape and screws to an adhesive. And so we, we cut the time down a lot because so I had to go through and drill the holes lay out the beetle tape, and then uh, screw them all down. Then it was just a one step, put some adhesive down, clamp it, and it was done. So when you, cut, when you put it down and you squeeze it together and clamp it, how do you get the excess out and come up clean? Uh, we use the right amount. Yeah. <laughs> because like, you like... You never, you never can use the right amount though. Yeah. Do you think you're going to use it less? It was in, it, when, it, when it filled out, it went into there. We had enough hold in our area that was joined, and we had enough overlap here where it didn't squeeze out. Squeeze out. Yeah. yeah. Because you had it down to a science already. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it took working with the vendor, figuring out which adhesive to use, how much to use, how fast to apply it, all of that to figure out the, the right mix. Yeah, the time, the, the time you lay it down, the time you got to clamp it, but... Mm -hmm. okay. And then how, curing time. how tight we wanted to clamp it, or because those two didn't need to touch, we wanted to have some of the adhesive left between them to, to, to make the bond. Because okay. if you clamp it too tight, then there's no, no adhesive left in them. <coughs> what about so, soldering? It's not <laughs> welding, right? What do you? What happens when you solder things? Just a temporary. Yeah, you're using kind of a metal glue, right? Yeah. So, no, but like if you think about wiring, you're bonding two wires together. Yeah, but are you actually melting the wire? Yeah. No. No. Soldering? No. No. You're just melting that. No, you're, you're melting the solder, and the solder flows around and kind of sticks to it and, and makes yeah. the connection. So in soldering, there's no melting. Of the no, no melting, melting of, of, of the base. So the base is the actual material that you had to start out with. The solder melts, yes, but the actual yeah, base okay. materials don't melt. Yeah. 
what is the usual, what's usually the, the material you use to solder with? Lead. Yeah, lead. Aluminum. Um, what, any other materials you can use to solder with? Yeah, we just saw it like gold an hour ago. Silver. And there's one more major material we use to solder with. Gold. And they can, but that's not a real common one. So, so lead solder used for real industrial kind of stuff. Silver solder used for jewelry, instruments, stuff like that. What when you go to the store to buy solder for electronics, what kind of solder is that? Platinum. Ooh, crap. What? Crap. <laughs> With solder, what do you use? Do you have to use torch, heat, what, what else? Flux. 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 So you need flux. They're not no more. Yeah, they not no they more. Got, they, yeah, they, oh, they got they got uh, non-flux yeah. uh, yeah, 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 material yeah, flux now. Flux cord solder. Flux. But flux what does the flux, flux do? It cleans. It cleans it, makes your joint nice and even. Uh, when I, my first industrial job, I did belt buckles, like championship belt buckles. Um, and so everything was soldered together and they just would coat the whole thing in flux and then solder it together. Just we want to make sure that that joint there was, was nice and good. <coughs> What's brazing? You're on the right track. It has to do with brass or bronze. No, it's not plating. It's like soldering. But instead of using lead, tin, or silver, you're using bronze. Brass or bronze. As, as your sole material. <clears throat> and here, what happens, and this is really good, good. solder kind of does this a little bit too, but in brazing really what you want is, because the solder kind of sticks to the surface, and in brazing your material, I mean, this is your base material, the, the grains of the material, and what you do is when you heat it up, it actually, it melts this, but then it also kind of, your material sucks that other, the bronze up into it. And so now you got your, your joint, and it kind of, the, the brazing material goes a couple layers deep into your base. Why is that good? Yeah, you, you get some strength. And so how strong does it make it? <laughs> what kind of question is that? I was going to make it. Make it three times stronger than what I Four times, five times, or? <clears throat> when I learned how to braise, we had to do, we had to take um, one and a half by eighth inch um, metal strips, and we had to do a three inch overlap on them and braise them together. And the, guess how you graded it? No. We had a. Hit it with a hammer. We had a, a three inch lap joint that was an inch and a half by an eighth of an inch thick. And then we had extra hanging off the ends. That's how he. What? He threw it on the ground. Kind of. He twisted it. He had to get a full rotation when he twisted it. Because this was, I don't know, about 
12 or 13 inches end to end. And so we'd clamp one in the vise, grab the other end with uh, pliers or something, and you had to do a full revolution, and that and your braze not break. So we broke in the middle, it's not strong. Yep. The metal? Yeah. Yep, you just take the whole thing, just twist it around. If your braze held, that's be thin metal then. Eighth of an inch. That's right, yeah. So it, it can twist pretty good. Yeah. Just get some pressure on it. But that, that joint had to hold, and it did. <coughs> so you got a lot more strength than soldering it. Would an adhesive be able to do that? No. Probably not. The, the, the force took to, to turn that thing a whole revolution, most of the uses would give up. Soldering it probably would have given up too. Oh, we missed one big thing for soldering. What was it being used? Oh, wait, we need to go through what soldering is used for. What's soldering used for? Electrical. Electro electrical Electro stuff, yeah. sheet metal. Making radiators. <laughs> <laughs> Radiators. R A D. What else? Like planning. What's another big use of soldering? Jewelry. Yeah, jewelry. Robert, what's a big use of soldering? Plumbing. Plumbing. Plumbing, yeah. So electrical, you got HVAC, you got plumbing. They do a lot of soldering. Yeah. So we got brazing there. So what's what's a real big benefit of Brazing over, let's say, welding. Less heat. Okay, it's less heat. Less distortion. Are we melting the base materials? No, no. Basing, it's getting stuck. You can. Yeah. So, you can melt. In, in normal brazing, there's no melting. So in traditional, in just brazing, there's no melting. They also have what's called braze welding. A braze is the uh, same thing as like uh, using a torch? Yeah, you use same a torch on it. So in, in brazing, if there's, usually, usually there's no melting. What would we call, why, why would we call it braze welding? What would that be? Because welding, what we do? We melt the, the base, right? So what's braze welding? Melts the base and a brass fill. Kind of. What's another benefit of brazing over welding? With welding, what do you need to use half most of the time? Electricity. Or a welder. My <laughs> <laughs> guy that knows how to weld. Okay, your materials. <laughs> With your materials you're welding, what do they usually have to be? Same. The same or close to the same, right? Because can you weld Unless aluminum to steel? If you're taking, no. very carefully, right? Yeah. If you're taking, you know, <clears throat> brazing, you can do dissimilar metals, real easy. So with braze welding, what it is is say you're you have steel and aluminum. <clears throat> if you melt the the aluminum. But you don't melt the steel while you're doing it, that's braze welding. Braze welding means you melt one of the base materials but not both. Or if you're doing copper to brass and you melt the copper, not the brass, that would be braze welding also. Okay? Also, Braze welding is used a lot for cast iron because you're not really melting it all the way. You're kind of getting the, the it to loosen up a lot so that you can kind of fill it in, and then you still wake up into the rest of it. Um, you're What's not just making a, a new joint. What's welded with cast iron? What? What's welded with cast iron? Cast iron to cast iron? Yeah, if you needed to take two cast iron pieces and, and join them, we'll you you do braze welding. What was that? I'll fill it back. Yeah, or, or fill a crack. I've had to do it before. I do it with a map torch. Uh, map torch and a brass rod. My mom had a little old <laughs> bird bath thing that, that someone knocked over. Not, not me. It was my sister. <laughs> she backed over it. And so I had to go up there and, and, and braze weld it back together. 
Those little map torches are, are great for that. like friction welding that we saw because so we don't actually turn it to a liquid it just kind of it happens while it's, it's going we have forge welding so what would forge welding be used for heat it red hot and work together yeah heat it red hot and work together what's um, something that's made like that knives knives swords like samurai swords samurai. we're done like thousand layers <laughs> 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 Yeah, everyone looks skinny. I actually have one of those on my bar. <laughs> yeah, so you just heat it up, it looks right hot, and you just smash it back together. <coughs> uh, diffusion bonding, which I'm not sure exactly what that is. You can look it up. Um, and then cold, through pressure, roll, explosive, or ultrasonic. So I'll have another video that we can watch and, and see the explosive and ultrasonic welding. Yeah, Where is ultrasonic welding used most? Underwater. What? Didn't we talk about it before? No. No. I think we did. Ned, no. not, not in detail, but you did. Plastic. You might have said, Plastics, we are now right. going to talk about ultrasonic. It's break time. Ultrasonic. <laughs> no, I think we're drawing stuff on the, on the board for ultrasonics. It's probably for a different class. No, I think it was class. I remember. I'm pretty sure it was class. But ultrasonics is usually used for plastics. <clears throat> um, and then we have the liquid states. So we have the resistance welding. So we have spot welds, uh, seam welds, projection welds. Um, so what's that used for mainly? For all three of those. Sheet metal stuff, right? So spot and seam weld is basically just binding the two sheets together. And spot welding, you, just, you do it at specific points. On a seam weld, what do you do? Yeah, the entire length. So what what does that do to the to this part? Or what do you use a seam weld on? Overlap. What would you seam well? What did Hi, tanks. Some tanks. Tanks. So gas tanks. Two parts of them together, they seam weld it. Gas tanks, like, like acetylene go. tanks? No, like gas tanks Propane for your car. Tanks. Oh. Most of them are plastic nowadays. Oh, it's still seam weld, right? Unless it's a one piece. It's it, if they do it in two halves, they'll do a seam weld around it. So what was called when they was making them? Water heating tanks, and they had that piece they photo over, and that thing just rolled over. And That's a seam on the, weld. On the, oh, no, that for the good. inside tank, they did a seam weld. Yeah, when they rolled yeah. it up. On the outside tank, with the, the one that was white, yeah, okay. they, they just did a locked groove. Yeah. And so they actually made it so they that wasn't seam, a weld, that was a mechanical right joint. Yeah. Where the material seam, went down. You bonded those two seams together. And that one went like that. Together. Yeah. And then just smashed that together. Yeah, okay. So that, that's a mechanical joint, not a. But, but on the inside tank, yeah, they, did well. they did well. They did a seam weld. Well. Okay. And then what was the projection weld? Yeah. What? I like that one. They put it on top of the thing, and they put it together, and they did the whole thing at once. Yeah, so it, they do. So yeah, instead of just two sheets of metal, you got a, a sheet piece of sheet metal, and then something that's a lot bigger, that it welds that down into the sheet metal. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, it was a little hot water heater. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So you can join a, a big piece of it down into it. Yeah, it's coming yeah, from the bottom. From the bottom. Yeah, okay. And then we have over here under thermal, so we have the heat types where you're just applying heat to it to melt it. So we have gas welding, so oxyacetylene, MAP. Um, you, can kind of, you can weld some stuff with MAP. Um, aluminum is really easy to weld with MAP. Can't really well steal at all with map. You guys know what map is? No. 
Basic things for brazing and stuff, it's really good. <clears throat> but usually we use gas, and we use oxygen and what? CO2 settling. Settling, right? So oxygen and settling. Um, so we have, so we just heat it up and then we weld it. What about, what's thermite? It's crazy stuff. So what, what AJ? What's thermite? It's a, I don't I don't know what it is. Like, yeah, I know that it, it just burns really really hot. And it can cut through just about anything. So carbon. The, uh, it's it's, like a, it's okay. an aluminum powder and some other stuff. It's the stuff that was on the outside of the Hindenburg, basically. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Is that what you touch to air hose and blow out? No, I don't. Say yeah, that, that's different. Um, so it, it's a, a material that burns really hot. You basically, once you get it lit, it just goes. And it, it burns at, I don't know. <laughs> Google it. You know, it, I'm on a page, but it just takes sure. like the formula, the chemical reaction. There it is, right there. Five hundred degrees Fahrenheit. That's it. <laughs> that's it. Jump in it. It's just right <laughs> yeah, that's not very good. But in the winter, it's hot enough that it just it. it'll burn through any basically anything. It still melts that's at really hot. like like four thousand. It, it's it's molten at that time, temperature, and so at forty five hundred degrees, it just it'll go through anything. <coughs> it's kind of cool because you're adding um, chemical reaction to it. And then there's laser welding. Yeah. Um, and then there's laser welding, where you've got a laser that focuses the beam. And so they use that for like eyeglasses, for like the, the, the nose piece. They just hold it and just, it just laser beam welds it. <coughs> and then we have the electrical ones, which are probably the most common in industry. So we have this, which is, what, what kind of welding is that? Stick. Yeah, stick Hard. welding, right? So here we actually have just the electrode that we're holding. Um, and it has the core and the flux. Um, and when the flux gets ignited, it turns into a gas to shield it. So why, why do we want to have a, some kind of a gas shield around here? 
around your joint. Yeah, keep the oxygen out. Why do we want to do that? So you know that it's contaminated. Yeah, yeah, because oxygen forms rust, right? No oxygen, it can't rust. <clears throat> so with this, we've got as that the gas shield here. It also builds up a, a layer of slag on the top that helps protect it while it's cooling down. That's the kind of arc one that I know how to do. What's this? MIG. It's MIG, right? Gas, metal, tungsten, electro. So here we've got a, a welding gun that has a wire that comes through it with, with the fill material. <coughs> and it also has a gas that's flowing out of a tank to do it. On a, on a MIG? Yeah. yeah. You, have, you have a gas tank. And this, the, the gas comes out. Uh, the the electrode that comes out. No, it shoots a gas of, uh, what is it? Uh, yeah, CO2 argon, CO2 argon yeah. something that you want to use to keep the oxygen away. I'm sure you can still weld, but I think it would be pretty, you know, to weld. Noisy, messy. And get, it'll get stuck all the time. Yeah. Crack around and pop it. <laughs> I took a big load one time, like, ugh, ugh. And then there's TIG. TIG. TIG, that's that it. That is so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to take the summer. It didn't come out very well. Especially since I went straight to taking on aluminum. Because that's all they had at Cal Poly. They just had some TIG. Or just some aluminum. They didn't have any, any steel in the shop. So, which of one of those is better? So usually it's either MIG or TIG for industrial stuff. It just depends on what you're doing. It depends on what the metal is. It's like food grade. You need to take because it's usually stainless, so it can't corrode. <coughs> what other things do you want to use take for? So aluminum, yeah. So things things when you need to control it a, a lot more. You have a lot more control with the tank than you do with the MIG. <coughs> what else can you do with take that you can't do with with MIG? What can you? Yeah. Use. Yeah, you can you can just you can weld without oh, yeah. filler. Without filler. So if you just if you want to use the materials are there and you don't want to add filler to it, you can do that with TIG, but you can't do it with MIG. MIG you're on, are always constantly adding material. And with TIG you can also control how much you add and when you add it. With MIG it's just kind of it's going. With TIG you have a lot more. You have was I wrong about that? You can okay. control it with the feed. Okay, but then but it's not. You have to go down just an for that, right? Is TIG a rod? TIG is that yeah, a little yeah, like yeah, 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 like a little... And then you have a filler rod just like you do when you're a selling wall. Not fun. So is the TIG and the MIG the same? No. Almost, no. I mean, but the, the nozzles are the same? No, 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 no. Yeah? I know the, the, the MIG gets fed, and right? Oh, yeah. Through the rod, it gets fed. TIG, you feed so, it by hand. Here's, so you're holding the gun on one side and the filler with the other hand, and you feed it. Oh, oh that's you the feed TIG. It. So here's, yeah, that's here's a MIG you, torch. You never want your, your, the tip of your TIG to touch the metal. Yeah, or else uh, it's just... Because then you corrode your weld, well, you have to That's why I did. Oh, so if you touch the... So touch here the the it gets stuck. It just touches your handle, and it comes out. So there's your material coming out, and it's going to go and touch the material. I'm going to go into whatever you're welding. Kind of showing you, kind of like breaks off, supposedly. Um, <laughs> this is a TIG torch. So with this, you never want it to touch. This is right there is your electrode. And the electrode doesn't touch, but then you have a filler rod that you use to add your material separately. The electrode's expensive. Dang, yeah. And there are yeah, and they're a pain to sharpen. Yes, you need a badass wheel. Especially if you're using one that's like that long. So, so, <laughs> so if you suck at it, you just have to grind it more than you're at the. the yeah, level. that's what I did. I was at the grinder for about 40 <laughs> minutes. I was actually rolling for about 10 minutes. Oh,
on him with the welder. Yeah, I got one that I thought was pretty good, and then I looked at it, and I actually hadn't done anything to the aluminum. I was just doing a surface weld, and I actually hadn't even like burnt into the aluminum at all. I just had like filler stuck up to the top of it. Actually, actually, no, I wasn't even using filler yet. It was, it was like discolored. You just warmed so, it up. <laughs> but with welding, you can get really good things. What's a what's something you can do with with MIG that you can't do with TIG? Like a material. No, you can do that. No. Is that thicker material? Thicker. Oh, thicker. Yeah. Okay. Is that thicken? <laughs> what else? Can you overhead weld with both of them? Yeah. Right. Sure you can. You gotta be a badass. Yeah, you're gonna be a badass. 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 You're gonna yeah, probably someday. But MIG works for that. <clears throat> With when you're automating welding, you have to know exactly where the welds going to go most of the time. They have some robotic welders that'll actually find the seam and follow the seam. So if it's off position a little bit, it'll it'll keep on the seam. Uh, but most of the time, you it needs to be right where it is. So if, if your parts aren't positioned right, remember that on that video, it had a big old <coughs> fixture for it that had. Like clamps from the outside, clamps from the inside, clamps everywhere to hold it in the right spot. <coughs> so, what are some of the benefits of welding? spot where it's welded. Is, is that weaker than the rest of it? or No, it's stronger, right? Now the joint is actually the strongest part of the material, not the weakest part. So with brazing and adhesives, the joint's the weak part. With welding, the joint becomes the strongest part of it. But when you're welding, you can also weaken the metal around it because you're exposing it to heat. Yeah, so, you, so now that's how you can also weaken it. I think you're going to be able to weaken it that much if you're not, you're not going to be in the same position for yeah. a certain amount of time. Sometimes you can though, like, um, like you'll see a lot, a lot of the times when you weld something on, it will crack around the weld on the outside because yeah. you just, you weaken the metal. Yeah. That's because you're over welding it. No, right? some, like frames on diesel trucks, like on 18 wheelers, the frames are stamped. You're not supposed to, because that's treated material. Once you weld on it, you just pretty much like ruin it. Toss. Yeah. Because anything that's heat treated has already gone yeah. through a specific heat, heat treating. It's already gone through a specific you cycle it, of it heating up and going off, right? Even a little bit. <clears throat> and so when that's you, they when you pre weld on that, that's, that? that's why they come pre manufactured. Yeah. So anything that's heat treated has already been carefully gone through heating and cooling cycles. If you weld on it, you destroy that heat treatment, mm -hmm. basically. And so you kind of reset it to what it was when it came out of the foundry to begin with. And so you can lose any of the strength that was there, or you can, it'll crack because of the stress that's built up or the stress that's been put onto it by other things. So probably in that case with the 18 wheeler, there's a lot of load on that. So when you weld on it, you, you weaken it, and that causes the cracks to happen. So how would you even <coughs> fix it without welding anything on it? So then it's time to do an adhesive or bolt, bolt or time. something like that. Do a, a bigger so, uh, channel metal.
Do there need to be any other infinite pits? How about first of all? Yeah. You know, there's lots of different types of welding. The spot welding is a lot different than, than MIG or TIG, but it does the same basic thing. Welding can actually be cheaper yeah, and it can to be some cheaper. extent than buying expensive adhesive. And, and, and it can be quick, right? Oh, yeah. But it can also be expensive. Yes. And time consuming. So it can be both. It can be quick and easy and, and inexpensive and quick, or it can be something that's going to take a long time and cost a lot to do. The actual material itself. Not, but the time of the welder to, to do it and to do a good job of it could be a lot. Okay. Need anything else?